Welcome to a special bonus episode of The Dark Parade. My name is Bo, and I'm a found footage fool. <laughs> Tell me the camera thing isn't annoying. Yeah, it's annoying. Hey everybody, welcome back to The Dark Parade. It has been uh, a while since we have actually done a new episode. Uh, for that, I apologize. Uh, most of the summer, I have been busy working a second job uh, on account of being a public school teacher and needing some money over the summer to make ends meet. Um, look, yeah, let's not go into whether or not society is broken if somebody who bothers to try to teach children should have to work a second job just to make ends meet. I'm not here to make that kind of value judgment. I think uh, you can make that decision for yourself. But <laughs> I think it's certainly representative of something. Uh, but at any rate, so I'm wrapping uh, the the second job up um, because the first job is about to kick back in, about to start uh, going back to school and uh, working on lesson plans and getting stuff ready. But uh, because I am not working all the damn time, it means that I have an opportunity to watch movies again. And if I have a time uh, to watch movies again, that means I have time to discuss them with you kind people who have been uh, so very nice uh, and, and stuck with me while I've been, you know, working my, my sausage fingers to the bone, my fat little appendages, my phalanges. So I thought we would ease back into things if you will got uh actually a, a whole episode lined up with richard glenn schmidt uh once i i get a couple of movies watched and, and the notes done on those but that'll probably happen sooner rather than later so i would expect that's going to happen soon i don't know when we're going to return to a fully normal schedule um but i've been trying to keep things at least going by dropping the pick six episodes uh into this feed if you don't want those to drop anymore drop me a line let me know like hey i don't want to get these anymore uh then i'll i'll stop doing that but it's been a way just to kind of keep uh something in the feed something that uh you can listen to and hopefully you've been enjoying it's been a pretty fun season over on pick six movies um but like i said i don't know when we'll be back to a fully weekly schedule with dark parade um maybe very soon i don't know it just depends on uh how much work uh is ahead of me with the lesson planning and whatnot and uh as well as some other stuff. I've got uh, to do some some testing and things like that so that I can keep my teacher license. Um, anyway, n that's neither here nor there. Point being, uh, it may not be a weekly drop, but it will be more consistent than it has been. Uh, at least every couple of weeks, you're going to get a little something. So, uh, But uh, to get or back into things, to, to ease in, to dip our toes into the waters of horror movies once more, um, then I thought a found footage full episode was uh, a good idea, uh, mostly because it had been a while since I watched some of these and I felt like I needed to, to check in to see what was what. And it turns out they keep making these things. So let's, uh, let's dive in. I have a selection of four, count them four found footage movies and to uh, evaluate these, obviously, I don't just do a review. That's silly. That, that Anybody can do a review. I like science. I like good, cold, hard facts. And so what I'm going to do is apply our, our criteria, a set of criteria that we've developed in the found footage full labs uh, that allow us to evaluate these movies, not as just some subjective form of art, but as found footage films. And uh, let's bring up that list. And as it happens, we have five, count them five criteria for this. Uh, it, it's keeping the camera on. Does it make sense to do that? Uh, are the characters any good? That's our number two. Number three, is it authentic? Does it feel real within the context of the movie? Uh, number four, is it watchable? Is this a movie that you can sit down and have a good time with? And finally, number five, is it scary? And uh, God willing, that's what these movies uh, ultimately are is something that, that's kind of scary, right? Like, we're not watching these movies for our health. Heavens no. We are, we are trying to get uh, some, some good old-fashioned scares out of these things. So let us start with uh, a movie from 2016 entitled The Final Project. 
And I have to tell you right off the bat, a lot of these movies I got off of the Tubi. Uh, that is uh, the repository of found footage movies. They will accept all comers. It doesn't matter if the movie is barely a movie. They will uh, say, hey, we are willing to put this on our streaming platform and uh, we'll throw some ads in there. If somebody watches this thing, we'll give you, you know, a dollar uh, and and charge our advertisers much more than that. That, I assume, is the, the platform, the, the business model for, uh, for Tubi. So the final project is a story about, uh, stop me if you've heard this before, a group of students who decide that they're going to do a film thesis project by going to this like Louisiana mansion that's haunted. And sure enough, they get there and lo and behold, uh, it's haunted as fuck. Um, but, but that said, uh, not that much happens in this movie. And this is kind of why I wanted to start with it because it's probably the worst of the movies. Uh, the final project, more like the final boredom, uh, I guess that's not really a pun. Doesn't matter. It's boring as hell. But uh, again, that's a subjective response to this movie. And we're here to do science. So, number one, does it make sense to keep the cameras on? This is our first criteria. And yes, uh, it does make sense to keep the cameras on in this movie. Because they were doing a film project. And I think that uh, that works. I mean, it's it's a pretty rote kind of excuse for doing this sort of thing. But it works that's fine. You know, Hey, we're a bunch of uh, uh, film students. We're trying to do a project and, and lo and behold, uh, we're, we're capturing some haunted stuff on camera. If only, if only they (laughs) captured haunted stuff on camera instead of just them, uh, bitching at each other, which brings us to criteria. Number two characters. Are these characters worth talking about? Are they worth spending time with? And the answer to that is a resounding no. Um, this gets into a little bit of technical issue with the movie, but the sound is fucking terrible. It, the sound is so bad in this movie that even when you can hear the characters, which isn't all the time, they're still bad characters. But as a rule, filmmakers, amateur budding filmmakers out there, if you are going to have your characters talk to one another, try to mic it in such a way that the audience can hear that conversation. I'm not saying it's going to fix your movie, but it's not going to break it. And, uh, this movie is largely broken by the fact that a lot of times you just can't hear what the characters are saying. That's not good. But, and even when you can though, these are not great characters. There is this extended sequence in the movie where they're just playing this, like, would you rather kind of game in the car? And it goes on forever. It goes on and on and on. And it's like, look, man, you're only giving me an hour and 20 minute of runtime. That's fine. I don't need these movies to be long. In fact, I don't want them to be long. But if you are spending 10 minutes of your hour 20 doing this, doing a, a game in the car, like a travel game, then you are telling me as a viewer, you got nothing to say. You got nothing to do. You got no moves. You got no game. And uh, that's a real problem. There's also a scene where two of the characters just have this wild argument in the middle of a field and it just gets mean. And not that you're supposed to really like these characters, but there's literally nobody in the movie that seems to be a decent person. Uh, At best, you get neutral characters that you just don't know that much about that sort of rise to the fore at the end of the movie. But for the most part, the characters are kind of terrible. Um, not, not like poorly formed characters. They're just bad people. And that is also not great for your movie. If you can hear the characters and that somehow makes it worse than not hearing them at all, that's a mayday. So characters, no good. Authenticity. Does this feel real? Um, there's a little bit of a Blair Witch thing that happens early on in this movie where they're interviewing kind of town locals and that stuff worked pretty well. I thought it's not convincing in the sense that these amateur performers are delivering a good performance or anything, but it's at least something. And, and that I enjoyed. Um, but then once you're just alone with these characters, the acting is not great. Like I said, you can't really hear them a lot of the time. 
it just takes you out of the movie. So the authenticity kind of wavers. I will give this like sort of second place on our list right behind keeping the camera on. That is totally reasonable. The authenticity is okay uh, up until you get into the technical problems of the movie. And even if they were film students, you got to think they would know better than the sound issues that we're having. So authenticity, I'm just going to give it a, like a little creaky kind of hand uh, that it, it's just sort of so-so. And then we get to watchability. Is the movie watchable? Um, and no, this movie dares you to pay attention to it. It is so boring. Nothing happens in this movie. When it finally gets around to stuff happening in the last, I don't know, 10 minutes or so, um, it's just not interesting. Like I said, you don't care about the character, so you're not invested in that part of it. Um, one of the early deaths is just something that happens in water, and you don't really see anything, and it's also just sort of inscrutable. So I, it, none of that goes to making this a more watchable movie. Uh, and and we'll dip into the scares a little bit here. Like, if you're going to backload your movie, like you're going to do a lot of setup and setup and setup and introduce characters and build those relationships and introduce a few little creepy touches here and there. And then the end of it's just got to explode. You know, that's kind of sort of paranormal activity. Definitely Blair, Witch, but Blair, Witch, I would argue has interesting and compelling characters. You may not like, you know, Heather, for example, but she's a real character and, you get a sense of who they are and, and what their motivations are. And you don't really have that with this movie. Also, uh, when you get to that like point of explosion at the end of the movie, it's just got to go bad shit. And at most it gets like the needle ticks from a zero to a three and then back down. And then they do this little tease at the end of the movie of like, look, one of the people is still missing and this is the last footage we have of her. And you want that to be kind of dynamic and scary. Kind of the uh, original paranormal activity thing, right? Like the last time you see Katie, she's all demoned out and whatnot. Spoilers uh, for uh, paranormal activity one. Uh, but that's not what happens here. It's just you get a little bit of crazy audio and that's it. And then you're done. And uh, it's not scary. It's boring. The characters are bad. It's riddled with technical problems. Um, the only thing that it does right is give you a good excuse of why you're keeping the camera on in the first place. It's terrible. The Final Project is a terrible, terrible found footage movie. I can't think of a single thing to recommend it other than if you just want to see a movie that shows you why found footage movies are so tough to get right. And here is a movie that kind of gets everything wrong. So, uh, really bad. Uh, final project, uh, a real disappointment. Which brings us to movie number two called The Changing of Ben Moore from 2015. And this is another movie that kind of dares me to continue doing this show at all. But <laughs> there are things about it that I find entertaining uh, despite the movie's best efforts to, you know, not be. But uh, this is... Directed and written by a guy named Jason Mills, who uh, has done a couple of these movies. Like, they came from The Attic and Bigfoot Country and uh, uh, what else has he done? Um, Elvis the Pig, most recently. Daddy, Clown Motel, Vacancies 2. Uh, uh, Mermaid Isle. Bigfoot Girl. Alien Psychosis. Alone We Are Not. Three Hours Till Dead. Uh, just the list goes on and on and on. Uh, and all of them seem to be uh, uh, pretty bad. So the change of Ben Moore is all about a guy um, what begins to suspect that something weird is going on with him because he's having blackouts and he's feeling sick all the time. And uh, so they start videotaping this guy to see what's going on. And you may be surprised to learn he is in fact, uh, possessed by demons or the devil. And so the, <laughs> the thing that I like most about this movie 
is that the guy who plays Ben Moore is an actor named Umberto Celisano, who is one of the top five swarthiest individuals I have ever seen in my life. Um, he's been in uh, other movies, apparently uh, pretty good movies or series like For All, All Mankind. He he played a role in that. Um, he has been in movies like First House on the Hill and The Arrangement and uh, Death of a Virgin. So uh, what are you going to do? Um, anyway, he is this short little Italian guy who has this big wide face and this scrub of chest hair that is visible often throughout the movie. The guy looks like he has to shave while he's shaving. And this is not a personal attack on him because God only knows, I wish I could grow a beard at all. (laughs) And I cannot, thanks to my Irish heritage and just bad genetics. But he is this guy who always looks like he is about 30 seconds away from telling you he's got to run down to the deli and get a sub. Um, (laughs) Which I like. I like. That's one of the things I like most about this movie is that the titular Ben Moore, who is doing all the changing in this movie, is a guy that looks like he can lead you to the best authentic Italian restaurant in town. Unfortunately, that's not what this movie is about. Uh, It is about him uh, occasionally getting dark circles under his eyes and killing the dog and maybe his girlfriend and uh, like his jaw dropping open in that CGI way that possessed people drop their jaw in movies like this. So uh, it's not very good, but let's, let's forget the subjective part of it and let's apply some science like we do in these uh, kinds of movies. Um, The reason for keeping the camera on is reasonable enough and I don't recall many instances that felt egregious in terms of like oh you would just put your camera down right now sometimes like towards the end of the movie when the titular Ben Moore is just all demoned out and is chasing people around and eh, maybe you drop the camera then but uh, for the most part it's fine uh, it's like you get a passing grade criteria, criteria number one but then we get to characters, and the characters are pretty dopey. Uh, nobody seems to understand that Ben Moore is possessed. Like, you don't have to be a religious person. You don't have to have a, a brain cell in your head to look at this guy, see his body and, and face warp and change, and him start to scream and act all animal-like. To be like, ah, the, uh, this guy's probably possessed, right? Possession? And that, that's probably what we're dealing with here. And nobody puts that together until it's far, far too late. So the characters are pretty dumb. Uh, ben Moore himself is not a great character because there's not a lot to him other than he's orphaned. And you kind of get a sense that, oh yeah, something happened when he was given up like he was part of this cult uh, or his parents were. And anyway, there also, he is strangely horny for his girlfriend in this movie. Like they are almost fucking a number of times in this film, which is fine. Look, I mean, going back to the old DBCC rule that you should be fucking, I'm all for it, but it, it's such a weird horniness to this movie where there's not really any nudity or anything it's just kind of kind of a randy film until it's not until the girlfriend goes away but i guess the the idea is that you're showing his attraction to his girlfriend and how he would never ever do anything to hurt her despite the fact that she disappears and he's weird about the bag that he's got in his room all of a sudden but even that is strange so the character is not great authenticity is this an authentic film of course not this movie is silly um it is very routine uh like it's it's a movie that you've seen a million times before if you've ever seen any found footage movie and the reality that it's trying to create is kind of undone by the cheapness of the digital effects and also it it just plays as silly 
when it's trying to be scary, um, which I guess we can kind of wrap the authenticity and scare into the same discussion here. But when it's trying to be scary, it's just kind of funny. And that's not what you want, clearly. Like those, uh, you, you can argue that comedy and horror are flip sides of the same emotion to some degree. But if you want your audience to be into your movie and into the the vibe of it, the spookiness of it, when you have your main character like all digitally masked up, you know, where his jaws hanging open and his eyes are super dark and he just looks at a camera and runs up the stairs like a cocker spaniel. It's just silly. And that harms both the authenticity and ultimately the, the scare factor of the movie. And that kind of lands us with uh, watchability. Is the movie watchable? And in a weird way, it kind of is. It's, it's boring as sin. <laughs> like it's not very good at all, but this Umberto Celisano guy, I found watching him do his thing in the movie to be entertaining not in the way that the movie wants it to be, but in the way that when I'm watching some of these movies, I kind of get the popcorn out and I'm like, oh, this is going to be deliciously stupid. And that's kind of where the change you have been more lands. It's just deliciously stupid. Also, this movie and the next one we're going to talk about are of a piece in that the one thing that they could afford is some scleral lenses And so when he's all demoned up and his eyes are real pale, it's like, oh, somebody spent the, you know, 40 bucks to get scleral lenses to put on this guy. And when you see this swarthy bastard with scleral lenses, like stalking towards the camera, it's pretty great. I really had a good time with that part of it, but I don't recommend it. Like it's not, that's not good. That is not something that you want for your movie, but it made me laugh. So... Watchability is, uh, it's, it, it's tough to say that like I'm recommending it as a watchable movie, but if you, if you wanted to throw it on in the background while you and some buddies goof on it, there is plenty of room to do that, but it's not a good movie. Like if you're going to watch a found footage movie, this is not a good found footage movie. It's just a, a ridiculously stupid one more so even than the final project, which is just dull as dirt. This one at least has some stuff going on periodically, and it's very, very silly. So I'll, I'll give it that. So that's the change you have been more. All right, so we are at our halfway point now. We have two movies left to go. The next one is uh, a movie called The Bell Witch Haunting, uh, directed by Glenn Miller. No, not the, uh, the guy who uh, was famous for the orchestra but rather the guy who directed such asylum films as Aquarium of the Dead, Zombies and Zombies 2, Top Gunner Danger Zone, Santa Claus, uh, The Co-Ed and the Zombie Stoner. Um, What am I leaving out? Escape from the Zombies? That's apparently a video game. Uh, Why haven't I played that? Um, Anyway, just a, a lot of, you know, movies that cannot in any way be good. So, Mind Cage. What is Mind Cage? All right, I'm going to have to dig into the oeuvre of one Glenn Miller. No, not that one. The other one. Anyway, so this is what started all of this found footage business recently anyway. Because I'd heard this movie wasn't very good. But I live, you know, within 20, 30 miles of the Bell Witch Cave. And when I grew up... Uh, near Adams, Tennessee, which is referenced in the movie, of course. And by the way, doesn't really look anything like uh, the the setting of the movie. Um, I remember the Bell Witch stories well. I had like books that were purchased from the gift shop and all that kind of stuff. I always thought the Bell Witch story was intriguing because it's kind of unsatisfying as a ghost story, but I think that's kind of what makes it great uh, because it doesn't play by the rules. There are weird animals and scratches and maybe it was about John Bell. Maybe it was about his daughter. There was the whole Andrew Jackson business. It's just a whole lot of 
like none of this connects in a way that makes good narrative sense. It's just a lot of weird, creepy stuff. And to me, that is more suggestive of a real paranormal thing, even though I don't think the Bell Witch was a real paranormal thing. But if I did believe in that kind of stuff for realsies, disconnected weirdness makes more sense to me because how could we possibly know the motivations and the, the machinations of a purely spiritual creature, right? Like there's no way to understand their behavior. And so I didn't expect this movie was going to get any of that right. And it certainly doesn't, but it's just about a bunch of like horny teenage friends who are hanging out at the house of like one of the parents uh, or one of the kid's parents and weird shit starts to happen. So uh, I think that the movie does a few things right. And let, let's get into that. As far as keeping the camera on, um, eh, some of it is handheld camera stuff, but there's also some security camera and webcam footage. And most of the time, that's fine. It's not perfect, but it's mostly okay. Uh, And I can forgive the stuff that's not perfect. Where you get into trouble with this movie are the characters. The characters are ripped out of any other horror movie you've ever seen. There are the, you know, slutty friends. There's the doofus dudes who drink too much. There's the boyfriend. Uh, There's mom and dad. Like, nobody has this rich interior life. It's a lot of stereotypes a lot of tropes. None of it is very compelling. The characters are sort of fine for a movie like this, but they're not good. And so it's enough to keep the movie afloat, but not much more than that. And the performances aren't great across the board. There are some good ones here and there, but not a ton. Uh, It's a really unfortunate mix of characters for the most part and nothing to really recommend the movie. Um, not not anything that's totally going to sink it a little bit worse than the idea of keeping the cameras on in terms of success, but it's not a disaster. It's just not very good. And then you get to the authenticity part and that's where things go wildly off the rails because some of the shit that happens in this movie is just ridiculous and stupid. Um, from the possessed girl getting caught in a drainage pipe, eating a dog, uh, (laughs) which is pretty great. There's a point where she just flies into the air and just starts spewing witch talk. There's the dad getting possessed and just going on walkabouts in the woods. All right, so here's what I will say for this movie. It's deeply dumb, but stuff happens. There is, there's generally something going on most of the time in this movie. And considering the last two movies we talked about, and in particular the final project, I will go with a movie that is being stupid over a movie where nothing happens every day of the week. And I, I don't think The Bell Witch Haunting is good by any stretch, but this is another one that feels like there's enough that happens in the movie that you can have a good dumb time with it. Uh and that, but that requires that you're with the right people, like watching it by yourself. Don't do what I did and watch it by yourself because then it's just nonsense. But it, it has moments that I'm like, oh, this is at least going for something. And it's, it, it's cheap and it's not pulling it off very well, but it's at least trying some stuff. And the body count is good enough that things are at least interesting for most of the runtime. Uh, the opening is a bit of a slog getting through the, like the party and introducing characters and whatnot, but it's wildly inauthentic, not just because I know something about the bell witch and live nearby, but just because all the stuff that happens in it is truly stupid. But like I said earlier about the whole scleral lens thing, there's some of that in here. And I think that's pretty funny. So, uh, yeah, you've got it all. It's bad digital effects, scleral lenses, people floating, eating animals, everybody's possessed. Uh, One guy just gets swooped up in the woods when he's like giving a eulogy to a buddy of his who's died. It's all just nonsense. But it's kind of 
fun nonsense. And that's why when I talk about the watchability of this, it kind of more so even than the changing of Ben Moore, this is kind of a fun, bad party movie where if you've got a bunch of people around and you're having a couple of drinks and you can kind of turn the sound down because none, nothing that anyone says is going to make any sense and it doesn't matter. And so you just kind of turn your brain off, let the beer do the thinking for you and you kind of riff on the movie and have a good time. I think on that level, it's, it is kind of watchable as a found footage horror movie that is there to entertain slash scare you. It's totally a disaster, uh, which leaves us with our, our fifth criteria, which are the scares. And it is not scary at all. It is full of batshit nonsense. And on that level, I kind of liked it. Uh, I don't think it's good, but I thought it was entertaining enough. Um, it's just not going to scare you. Like there, There's a big asterisk here of you should watch The Bell Witch Haunting if you're with three to four other people who enjoy bad horror movies. And this is pretty nonsensical. And... It like the drinking and the conversation will get you through that first half hour where nothing's really happening. And then the next like 50, 40 minutes, 50 to 40 minutes, maybe I should reverse that 40 to 50 minutes of the movie uh, are just kind of silly and weird. And you'll look up at the screen and be like, so why is the dad puking up blood right now? And eh, doesn't matter. He looks like Dan Haggerty slightly and that's fun. So, yeah, there's that kind of thing. Um, and that brings us to our final film. Uh, that is the only legitimate movie on this list as far as I'm concerned. But it's a movie from 2011 that I'd seen a while back. Uh, it, it's called The Tunnel. It's an Australian film. Maybe most notable because as far as I know, this was the first movie that I recall that was like, hey we're just going to release this son of a bitch on BitTorrent, And it was all kickstarted. Like the, the money was, uh, to make the movie was, uh, was raised through, you know, that kind of third party, not a real production company really. Uh, so it was kind of a kickstarted movie and distributed where it was just like, we're not going to charge for this. Really. Everybody can get this for free. And it seemed like a calling card kind of movie. It was the the first movie from uh, Carlo Ledesma, who has gone on to do some other stuff, although not anything major. Um, and it's the story of the Sydney government is going to open this water treatment plant. And a reporter and her intrepid team are wanting to do an expose about people who live under the city and could be displaced. And as they start to dig into it, there's a sense that there's something else going on under the city. And they sort of suppose that this is something to do with government intervention. And more than anything, they just want to prove that people live down there. And so the government needs to kind of pump the brakes on this water treatment project. And uh, they're initially not allowed to film underground, but they uh, bribe somebody, a guard, basically, to use the subway tunnels to, to get to this underground area. And then run afoul of some good old-fashioned monsters uh, under the city. Um, so let's let's just talk criteria before we get too deep into this. So keeping the camera on, um, totally reasonable. It's done in a mockumentary style, very Lake Mungo-esque, in that the surviving characters are being interviewed and you're also looking at the footage that they captured. So some of the footage isn't necessarily found footage, but it's uh, them commenting on the footage that was captured and their motivations for doing things in a very documentary style. Uh, kind of style that I think works well for this movie. So keeping the camera on totally fine. The characters are kind of where the movie shines. It definitely owes some to the bell, Witch, not bell, Witch project, Jesus Christ, Bo, uh, <laughs> the Blair, Witch project in which you have a reporter 
that is sort of taking some risks and putting the lives of the people around her in danger for the sake of getting this story. Uh, the cameraman um, who is played by uh, Andy Rodereda, Rodereda, anyway, whatever, um, is kind of great in the movie. Um, and he's he's great in the interview stuff. He's great in the in the uh, found footage sections of the movie. He's just really fun and compelling. And hearing him talk about his buddy Tangles, me and Tangles, we'd like to have a brew or two, me and Tangles did. Anyway, uh, it, like all the members of the crew are kind of fun, but those two in particular are really good and kind of fleshed out characters that make sense and that you kind of care about. And that brings us to authenticity, which is really great up until the point that the monster enters the film, because that's the point where the movie kind of breaks. I don't think the monsters are good in this. And the idea, I think, is that these are sort of mutants that live under the city that have grown to uh, much like the descent have sort of adapted to this world of darkness. And when you see them killing people and creeping around on people, most of the time, other than the shine on their eyes, they just look like dudes. And that is not scary. And even when you see one guy getting sort of slowly killed by a, one or two of these things or one of these things, um, it's just not terribly effective. So the authenticity, like all the interview stuff and even the found footage stuff up until you start to see Monstars is great. And then once the Monstars show up, that's where the movie kind of goes south. And I don't think it works very well. Um, and so let's jump to scares then, because that's the biggest problem with this movie is it's authentically shot. The performances are good. The characters are interesting. The premise is great. And it's just not very scary because I don't think the monsters are very good. And it undoes everything else that's good about the movie. Even though I, if someone were to ask me if they should watch the tunnel, I would probably say yes. I would probably say if you've never seen it, give it a shot. It might work for you m much better than it did for me. I just think it, it takes too long to get to the monsters. And then the monsters aren't very effective. So that it... it, it undermines the effectiveness of the film up to that point. And so that get, brings us to the watchability of the film. And I think that it is a very watchable movie, but I also think that it, it takes too long to get to the meat of the action. And then when you get there, I find that to be somewhat disappointing. And so I think the tunnel when I rated this on letterbox, like everything else we talked about today gets like a star, two stars. If that, this is the, the one movie that's like, okay, this is a three star movie for me, which means I kind of recommend it. I don't think it's great, but I think it's good. And that's where I come down on the tunnel. Uh, I know they were teasing a sequel to the tunnel way back when, uh, when the, a couple of years after the movie came out and I would be genuinely interested in, in seeing that I would love to see a sequel to this movie where you kind of get to the business of the monsters quicker. Um, unfortunately with this movie, it just takes too long to get there and it's not all that great when you do, because again, you live in a world where the descent has happened. And if you're going to do monsters in the dark, the descent, which had a much higher budget, of course, and all of that, but still the descent fucking rocks. And this movie needed just like 10% of that. And it would have been an incredible movie, but instead it, it takes too long to get to the action. Once the action arrives, it's a little underwhelming. And as a result, the movie comes out as being a little more middling it than it could have been because so much else are like all the trappings of it are great. Uh, so yeah, that, that's the tunnel. Um, I know some people really like this movie. I wish I could get behind it in that way. Uh, I don't think it's terrible, uh, as, as you've heard, but it's just, it, it's just missing that thing, that spark, that, that really, uh, great set piece or, 
um, a sense of real danger or using the light in a clever way. Like it's just missing that thing that makes it more than just a great premise. Okay. So that's found footage full for this time. Uh, four movies to either avoid or get drunk to, uh, <laughs> as you see fit. Um, but it's great to be back. It is great to be recording this. I'm looking forward to doing some more stuff, uh, very soon as, as time and work allow. Uh, but thanks for hanging with me. Uh, everyone who has, uh, I really appreciate it. I love doing this stuff. And unfortunately I, I don't get to do it, uh, as often as I would like, but, uh, uh, hopefully that will be changing for the better soon. And next summer in theory, I'm going to be making a ton more money. Uh, so I don't have to do my second job thing and I can actually do some more recordings and stuff like this. So hopefully this summer will be uh, a bit of an anomaly in terms of, of my time being occupied with other things. Um, at any rate, thanks so much for listening. Some Asian horror stuff with RGS coming soon. Uh, until then, all I can do is say, uh, thanks for listening and thank you as always for joining the dark parade. We'll see you next time.